let's build a hexacopter. Laid out all the parts and looks like everything's there. The first step is to solder up all the parts on the power distribution board. If you have a nice little pair of helping hands like this and a magnifying lamp, even better. So first we heat up the pin and the board. Make sure we don't get a cold joint. Apply a little dab of solder. Not too much, and it looks good. Now the wire to the battery is a bit smaller than the hole that they make for it, so I had to add some solder to the end of it so it would fit snugly in there. It's also a giant heat sink, so you have to work pretty hard to heat it up to make sure it sticks correctly, and you don't end up with a cold joint there. After a bit of trying, I finally got it to connect nicely. I stripped only about a quarter inch of wire, so it fits snugly against the board. Here's the finished product with the Dean's connectors on as well at that weird angle, with the positive on the bottom and negative on the top. Now be really careful when you're soldering the Dean's connectors, make sure it's uh, not got any cold joints. I'll show you what happens later on if something goes wrong with your soldering job there. Now I personally don't like the Dean's connectors on something that I'm going to be using a lot, so on the battery I like to use XT60 connectors. Now there's a lot of amps going through this battery cable, so we put on some shrink wrap tubing to make sure we get a nice safe connector there. And we can do the same thing on the Dean's connectors for the ESCs. Meanwhile, my friend is assembling the frame. It comes together really quickly. They did a nice job designing it. You thread the wire down through the tube and put on the legs. And from there the frame comes together pretty quickly. We put thread locker on all those nuts so they don't come off. Now we can start to wire up the power distribution board to the ESCs like this. The power distribution board actually sits loose in there, but the ESC wires are going to hold it in place pretty well. So then we can go on to calibrate the radio and everything looks good there. We noticed during calibration that the roll and the yaw were reversed, but you can fix that on your radio transmitter. Once you have all the ESCs connected, you can do ESC calibration. But I ran into a problem. Listen to this. Five out of the six motors were calibrating nicely, but the sixth motor was making that weird beeping sound. It took forever to figure out the problem, but it turns out that one of the Dean's connectors was not soldered correctly on the board, or the Dean's connector was bad. So we switched that one out, and everything was good. So this is how ESC calibration should work. Now unplug it. Next time you boot the uh, APM, it's actually going to send the power straight to the motors. And you'll hear a couple beats. There we go. And then you bring the throttle down. That's odd. There we go. And it's done calibrating. There we go. Okay. Now we're ready for what I consider to be one of the most important tests of all. If you go to the terminal, when you're connected, and type in setup. There's a bunch of setup tests you can run from the command line here. One of those is called the motors test. This will actually cycle through each motor in clockwise order to make sure that you've wired up the motors in the correct sequence. If you don't do that, the hexacopter will flip out badly. So let's go ahead and run that. And in about four seconds, the motors will start up and go one in sequence like this. There you go. During this test you can make sure the props are turning in the right direction, and if not, you switch two wires coming from the ESC to the motor. Here's the finished hexacopter, all tied up and ready for leveling. We found a perfectly sized Tupperware container to keep the electronics safe and dry. You can use these LEDs from Amazon to hook up the lights on the hexacopter. This pack comes with the right size resistor uh, to step down the 5 volts from the APM board to the LEDs, which require about 2.9 volts. The APM board overview page, if you scroll down, tells you that there's four pins that output motor LED lights, and those lights will then tell you when the motor is armed or not, which is very, very useful. The lights will blink when it's not armed, and the lights will be solid color when it's armed. Okay, we're ready for the maiden flight. Ramp up the motors slowly, because you don't know if the quad is going to tip or not. There's a bit of wind that's pushing it to the left here. 
but it seems to be stable off the ground here. It's flying in stabilized mode, of course. All right, I can give it a bit of altitude. Looks nice and stable. Okay, excellent maiden voyage.